Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description below, click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating yet another portfolio evaluation technique and portfolio optimization based on said risk-adjusted technique. Our today's hero is the STAR ratio, as developed by Martin Rajev and Sibylle in 2003. And this has to do with conditional VR, or expected shortfall, or, as the authors themselves call it, expected tail loss, as a denominator of a conventional Sharpe-like measure. This can be considered one of the improvements of the Sharpe ratio when the returns of your portfolio are not normal, or when you are dealing with a more risk-averse investor, rather than uh, an investor who would use conventional volatility as their risk measure. So let's start with the application. We have got six asset classes as our usual uh, test sample. We uh, investigate and apply uh, all such techniques on. So large stocks, small stocks, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, gold and real estate over the course of five year period. And we have got daily returns of individual asset classes already calculated as usual. Now let's start with some portfolio, for example, an equally weighted one with one over six weights by the virtue of us having six asset classes. We can already calculate the sum of weights to make sure that they indeed sum to one. And we can simulate a five years uh, investment into such equally weighted portfolio or portfolio with any weights whatsoever using the sum product function and multiplying daily returns onto specified weights with rows locked in case of weights and enforcing it throughout the sample. Now we can calculate the uh, average daily return of such a portfolio by using the geometric mean function, one plus the area of portfolio returns, minus one. That gives us an average daily portfolio return of roughly four basis points. And daily volatility, we are interested in daily return and daily volatility as we are interested in daily conditional VAR. You would obviously uh, have annualized figures for most other evaluation techniques. Here, we just stick with daily volatility, daily sample standard deviation of the portfolio returns at 0.7%. And now we can start calculating our conditional VAR using two different methods and compare the results as our conditional VAR is the denominator of the star ratio developed by Martin Rajiv and Sibylle. First of all, let's specify a confidence interval. And uh, here, uh, the authors suggest to use um, um, 1% to 5% confidence interval, meaning that the VAR that we'll investigate would be, for example, a 99% VAR if we choose a 1% confidence interval. Here, we could calculate uh, a conventional uh, standard Z stat using the standard normal inverse distribution, giving us a Z stat of 2.33. Also, here we can uh, consider which of the two methods for conditional VR we would use. I've got separate tutorials on both of these videos, so I wouldn't focus on their assumptions and limitations. Uh, basically, we've got a normality assuming inverse Mills ratio calculation, which is represented in this formula. And we can also approximate a historical uh, conditional VR using the percentile function. So let's do both one by one. First of all, for the conditional VR using the inverse Mills ratio, we also need the probability density function, which is the norm as dist function of our uh, Z stat. And we want our density function, so zero, non-cumulative, giving us 0 0.0267. And then we can calculate the Z stat for the inverse Mills ratio, which is the probability density function divided by our confidence interval, which is 1 minus the 99%, giving us our modified Z stat that gives conditional VRs instead of regular VRs. 
and that means that we can calculate the expected tail loss or expected shortfall by just subtracting from the mean the volatility times by the just calculated modified Z stat, giving us a conditional VAR of minus 1.83% daily, which would, if we uh, consider this uh, as a risk measure or loss measure, uh, go in the denominator with a negative sign in front. So we would just say uh, divide the excess return by negative conditional VAR, so our ratio remains positive. So here we can calculate our annualized uh, expected return, which would be 1 plus our daily return to the power of 252 minus 1. Again, the usual annualization procedure. And we've got a risk rate of 1.57%. This is just, again, an assumption. You look up the most recent or the most relevant uh, yield of a government bond, uh, most uh, preferably corresponding to your investment horizon in terms of its maturity, and that can serve as a risk free rate. And the star measure is simply excess return, which is annualized return minus annual risk free rate, divided by negative conditional VAR, giving us 4.54, meaning that we gain more than 4 uh, units of expected return per 1% of daily expected shortfall. Now we can use Solver to optimize our portfolio to give us the best star ratio, the best risk-adjusted performance defined as um, excess return divided by inverse Mills conditional VR. Remember that conditional VR does assume normality, so our output can change drastically depending on which of the models we use, and we'll be able to see that later on. So we go Data Solver, specify our optimization task, so our objective function is the star ratio in cell R25. We seek to maximize it by changing our asset class's weights, subject to the only constraint that the sum of weights should be equal to 1. Here we leave this box ticked if we don't want a short cell and untick it if we do, and click solve. And the algorithm converges to an optimal solution with a star ratio uh, increase to over 6, and such a portfolio uh, invests quite heavily in uh, large stocks, gold, and treasury bonds, which is a quite um, a heuristically sound portfolio. You can imagine an investor who does something like this. However, what happens if we take into account the historical distribution of returns instead of its um, uh, theoretical uh, distribution assuming normality? Here we can calculate historical VR at a range of percentiles, for example, uh, go in 10 basis points at a time, and approximate historical conditional VAR or historical expected shortfall as an average over said percentiles. So here we can use the percentile.exe function, referring to the array of portfolio returns with rows locked, and refer to the percentile we have got over here. So we can see that at 0.1 percentile um, historical VR is negative 5.11%, and then we have got a range of such um, VR figures appearing uh, in front of us. And the conditional VR in this case would be an average over that VRs if the respective percentile is less than or equal to our uh, confidence interval. So we check whether these percentiles are lower than 1 minus uh, the uh, confidence interval, and the average range are the VRs in question. So, for example, at 1%, our historical simulation condition VR is negative 2.86%, and we can double-check that by seeing that if we go um, until 1%, we have got negative 2.86% uh, as our result indeed. So here we can change our star formula, referring to a conditional VR calculated using uh, a different set of assumptions, and solve uh, this particular uh, problem uh, just by rerunning the algorithm. And we see that our portfolio has changed considerably. Uh, we have got a stronger exposure to treasury bonds, 
um, similar exposure to gold and less stocks in our portfolio, reflecting the fact that we have got um, to account for the non-normality, which is most prominent, arguably here, for large stock return distributions. We can also tweak our confidence interval. For example, we can reduce it to 95% and see how that would change the result. This increases our exposure to stocks as we are less risk averse for this particular scenario. Here, the confidence interval can be treated as a parameter that uh, corresponds to the risk aversion of the investor. So therefore, if we do the uh, reverse manipulation, we increase our confidence interval to 99.5% which is not something that the authors of the measure recommend as the results are most robust if we go from 95 to 99% in this interval, we can simply test what's going on. And for this portfolio, we can see that our exposures to uh, golden bonds have increased, which is again understandable even uh, on an intuitive uh, theoretical level. And that's all there is about the STAR measure as portfolio performance evaluation tool and its use in portfolio allocation optimization. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.